my name is Anam Khan, and really the whole point of this session is to um, you know tell people how uh, different tactics that I used and um, how I really got my foot in the door um, into media and entertainment. So um, you know, just some background about myself. I had no you know previous connections, no family connections. Um, really just fell in love with the industry and working in the field and um, just tried to use different tactics to get those internships that are super important to then getting that first full-time role um, in the field. So, um, you know, if you can also uh, uh, write in the chat about how you heard about the session, I'd love to hear, um, you know, how you heard about Creative University and the session that I'm hosting. Um, and, okay. Okay, cool. So let me take a step back and explain what's Creative University. So this is a program that was started by a husband and wife team of Peter and Louisa Chaudy, along with their two children. And this was started during the pandemic um, as a really a give back to students and people that are trying to get into media and entertainment. Um, you know, the whole family understood how difficult it is to get started in the field. Um, similar to myself, Peter, you know, had no connections before he started and, you know, now runs his own media firm and has run a bunch of different companies um, in the past as well. Um, so really the whole point of Creative View, as I said, is it's a give back. We've had a ton of different speakers from different parts of media and entertainment and also technology. And everything is available on our website, which is up here, creative.media slash creative dash university. Um, the program was integral to me landing my first uh, full-time role, um, you know, post MBA, which is where I'm at right now. And the main thing, you know, as you see here on the presentation is that really we've heard this from every single speaker. And this is the fact that relationships matter the most. And I think in this field, more than any other, um, you know, building those relationships, keeping in touch with people is really um, paramount to getting any sort of opportunities in the field. So what have we done through Creative University so far? We've had 13 speakers, uh, 10 different companies have offered internships or opportunities to students. Um, several uh, people have been placed in internships. Uh, we even had someone uh, get interviewed on TV and I got my role, uh, my full-time job through Creative University. I'm working for a great company called Bulldog Digital Media that does uh, premium live streaming. So, um, you know, we live stream different concerts, events, um, you know, any sort of thing that can be turned into a stream online, uh, we do. And we focus on the premium segment of the market. So that means uh, doing ticketed shows online. Um, and I'm doing strategy. So that really encompasses working on how are we going to grow the company? I'm looking at the financials, looking at the staffing plans, things like that. Um, we actually have um, some pretty great live streams coming up. Uh, one is for the artist Joji, if anyone knows him, uh, who um, is on uh, the label 88 Rising. And we also have an Avril Lavigne benefit concert coming up. Um, and if it weren't for Creative University, definitely would not be in this great position. And, you know, especially with everything happening in this time, um, for myself, you know, being able to stay in media and entertainment and especially music um, has been uh, really a big blessing. Um, so, you know, just with Creative University, if you really want something bad enough, especially in this field, you really have to be persistent and let us know how you want us to help you. And, you know, as I mentioned, uh, this is the website where you can go to check out more and see how to apply to the program. I'm also going to paste uh, in the chat box a copy to this deck so you can um, have access to all of these links and some of the tactics and resources and information uh, that I'm going to be sharing um, after. Um, and here are some of the other upcoming Creative University sessions that we have. Uh, we have Scott Rupp, who is the founding general partner at Big Craft Ventures. Um, his job is really interesting. They focus on investing in esports and gaming. So I don't know if we have any gamers in here, but you know, it's definitely a, uh, an industry that I've seen grow over the last couple of years. And 
Um, I think it's going to be really great hearing from someone who's solely focused on, you know, that specific niche area of the business. Um, after that, we also have uh, John Skogmo coming. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of Jukin Media. And I think his uh, session topic sounds really interesting. He's talking about um, how he got from the living room to the boardroom and confessions of a real media and tech entrepreneur. And finally, we also have Peter, the CEO of uh, Creative Media. He's going to be doing a discussion on uh, Netflix and why he's bearish on them, meaning he doesn't think Netflix is actually gonna grow and that um, it's a solid business model. And this session is going to be more of a sort of um, debate where students can come and challenge him on uh, why he is, he's not so positive on Netflix. And you know, we'd also love to hear from all of you. And um, he's also written this book here on the left called Viral Media. Uh, this, is, um, uh, this is really a great primer on the state of media and entertainment across different industries right now. Um, again, you can get it at this URL up here. Um, Kurt, I just saw your comment. I am, this is going to be able, uh, this session is going to last about an hour. So I'm going to go into you know, my background, certain tactics that I used, um, and then just leave it up uh, and open to Q&A afterward. Um, and yeah, so definitely check out this book. You know, I think if you wanna get quick knowledge on different parts of the business, this is a great place to start. And Peter also talks about the effects of the pandemic on different parts of media and entertainment, which, are, um, which is obviously something all of us are thinking about. And uh, finally, we've also turned all of the past interviews that we've done into a podcast called Fearless Media. So if you want to check those out, um, definitely encourage um, downloading them. They're available through iTunes and also Spotify as well. So, okay, who am I? Who's this person speaking to you all? Uh, I'm an LA native. I was born and raised here. I uh, went to UCLA for undergrad um, and really, you know, got my start in media and entertainment because of being in LA, having access to all of these festivals and events, um, and really being able to use that uh, as like a means to start interning and working everywhere. You know, now you may be saying, okay, I don't really have access to all these companies. I'm not in a big city. Um, but you know, now the great thing is that with everything switching to being remote work, the opportunities and where you can work has definitely um, expanded. So UCLA was really where everything started for myself. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes that I think really embodies how I thought about my time at school. And this was, this was actually said by our student body president. And she said, don't let school get in the way of your education. And what she meant by that was, you know, sometimes we can feel like assignments and homework and all of that. Obviously that takes a lot of time and um, you know, is important, but at the same time, it's important to focus on learning about the bigger world around us and also um, learning from each other as well. And that was something that I really um, took to heart during my time at school. So um, some uh, quick timeline about, you know, where did I start? What am I doing now? Uh, 2009 was when I graduated from Whitney. I know we have a couple of people here uh, from, from my high school, so welcome to all of you. Um, then spent four years at UCLA. I was actually interning for Insomniac events uh, when I um, got hired full-time after I graduated. But what's interesting here is that I graduated in June of 2013 and I didn't actually start full-time until January of the following year. So if that just kind of sets some timelines and expectations, you know, especially in media and entertainment, nothing is ever um, really a linear path. And we've heard this from a lot of the creative university speakers. And for myself, it was a lot more important for me to get the right role and wait for that rather than, um, you know, just trying to get what I could as fast as I can. So, you know, in hindsight, six months sounds kind of crazy to be spending looking at, or just interning and kind of doing part-time work, but it was so worth it because it eventually did lead me to working at Insomniac full-time. So I did that job for two years, was really working as a music journalist, um, interviewing people that were coming to our music festivals, interviewing DJs, fans, um, all of that. Um, after um, spending two years there, I had been in LA my whole life and I decided to move to Qatar in the Middle East. Um, I had some family there, so I thought, you know, why not try it out? 
And, um, you know, if I don't like it, I can always come back to LA. So I moved to Qatar without a job. Um, and again, was in a very similar situation of when I was an undergrad, where I was trying to get these internships and opportunities without any connections or experience. Um, you know, in Qatar, I only knew a few family members and really was starting again from scratch of researching companies, figuring out how to apply, you know, preparing my pitch, all of that. Um, I spent three years working at a theme park uh, startup there, uh, opening the country's first theme parks. Um, and then, you know, I was, had stayed in media and entertainment, but at the same time, I really wanted to learn more about the quantitative and financial side of the business. So I uh, spent the past two years getting my MBA at Columbia. And, you know, if you had told me when I was an undergrad that, uh, you know, I'd be going to get my master's. Um, I would never have thought so. When I graduated from UCLA, I was very done with school. Um, but, you know, the point is here, like if you are thinking about grad school, I think it's good to get a couple of years of experience and really decide what do you want out of that experience. Um, so I spent the past two years at Columbia and then, um, you know, came back to LA uh, after uh, uh, finishing my degree. And, you know, was again in that same boat as uh, when I was when I was graduating from UCLA and when I moved to Qatar, where I was, again, looking for a job, uh, kind of felt like I was starting from scratch again, because I hadn't worked in the US for five years. Um, but one thing led to another, and I got connected to Peter and Creative University. And without that, I definitely would not have my role that I have now um, at Bulldog, uh, working in live streaming strategy. So that's just some of my background. I think, um, you know, it's, um, it shows, again, there's no real linear path. And um, it's also fun to take risks, you know, move somewhere new, uh, get an MBA in another city, you know, come back without a job. I've done all of these things. And I think I, um, you know, it's, uh, I've learned from every single step. So I'm getting a couple of uh, questions in the chat. If you have some uh, questions about what I'm talking about, feel free to pop those in. Um, so some people are asking about, you know, uh, would I recommend getting an MBA over a master's? Um, and isn't, okay. Um, it really, you know, the statistics about when people graduate and when they land their role, it really varies depending on, and I think honestly, all rules are out the window, especially now, um, given the current climate and everything happening with COVID. So I wouldn't even really look at those. Um, I, I liked the MBA because I could focus on media and entertainment and it was a very practical degree and that I knew I would be getting finance and operations skills that I could apply to any job. Um, sometimes with very specialized MBAs, or sorry, with very specialized masters. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you have to know, um, you have to know why you're getting into those degrees. So, you know, and this is something that you can feel free to like ask me about afterward. But to me, I just thought the MBA was the most practical because of the type of knowledge I would be getting there. Um, okay, so here's a list of the places that I interned when I was an undergrad. And I know this, this seems kind of, I mean, it is a long list. And now looking back, it's kind of crazy to think that I did work at all of these places. But really, I thought interning was, and even now, I think if you are able to do it, it's such a great opportunity because it's the perfect way to try before you buy, right? You can spend a couple of months uh, working at a company, uh, trying to see if you like uh, the place, if you like the environment, if you like the vibe, and then do that at a couple of places to really shop around before you're committed to any full-time role. So, um, you know, that was the attitude that I had in undergrad. I was like, you know, let me just try to get as many experiences as I can to see where do I actually want to work. Um, because, you know, the reality of the situation is when you start working full time, you're going to be spending more time in your job than anywhere else. Um, so you really want to make sure that you like the place that you're working and that it's a good environment for you. So you'll see here, there's really a mix of different entertainment and media companies, and then also more government and political focused orgs. And that was really because I was a political science major in undergrad, and I wanted to see if that was a route that I wanted to go down. Um, but you know, once I started uh, pivoting more towards music jobs, I really realized like, this is such a great field that I feel passionate about, that I enjoy what I'm doing. And I really never looked back ever since. Um, 
some highlights of where I worked. Um, TMZ was, I just really loved the show. I, I thought it was hilarious and I thought it'd be great to spend a summer there seeing how it's actually made. And what's interesting here is I just sent an email to their general info box. And a fun fact about TMZ is that they actually read all of their emails that they get because they get a lot of the tips that you see that then turn into breaking stories on their sites through those emails. So, you know, they were very quick to respond to me and ended up placing me in the photo gallery department uh, where I spent a summer, you know, uh, going through celebrity pictures, coming up with different galleries, writing captions. Um, it was really a very like casual and fun internship. And I also got to see the show being produced, which was uh, really great. Um, hard events, uh, this internship I got, this is probably the best story of how I got an internship. So I had already been working at Live Nation at this premium seat sales job before. And um, we got an email from the CEO of Live Nation, Michael Rapino, And he said, um, you know, I'm, uh, we're starting this new division called Electronic Nation. And part of that was because uh, Live Nation had bought the company Hard Events. And he was saying, and he said, you know, if you're interested in learning more about Electronic Nation, um, you know, feel free to ask. So I, I emailed the CEO back and I said, hey, I'd love to intern in the department. Do you have any openings? And he connected me to the president of, Heart of, uh, of Electronic Nation, who then met with me. And that led to another internship uh, in the marketing department there. So you'll see there's really no set way to get any of these opportunities. And a lot of times you just have to try. Um, and I'll be getting more into like the different tactics that I use, but uh, pretty much none of these roles I actually applied to formally. It was all through emailing people. Um, some was some were word of mouth, um, but yeah, none of these jobs I actually got was through actually applying uh, to a formal posting. So this is uh, different examples of the routes that I took. And I'm going to just, uh, again, quickly post in the chat for anyone that joined late. This is a link to the deck. So you can, you know, you don't need to keep take a lot of notes if you don't want to, you can access the deck there. Um, so yeah, just practically speaking, how did I get these roles or what are different tactics to use? The first one that, you know, I think definitely should be tried and you can use to gather knowledge is to apply to different postings that you see online. So how did I actually go about doing that? You know, the easiest way is set up different alerts on LinkedIn and Indeed. Set up a routine of when you're planning to apply. So either set aside a couple of hours on a Saturday or Sunday, um, have a template ready of the resume that you want to send, the general cover letters, and then uh, replace whatever information you need to for every role that you're applying to. That's, you know, one strategy. And I think even if you don't apply to roles, you should definitely set up alerts because it's great to see who's actually hiring, what sorts of roles are they looking for, and things like that. Cold emailing is actually where I've personally had the most success. Um, this is how I got connected to Creative University also. Um, and I'll go into how I actually do this. But really, you know, if you want to reach out to someone at a company, for me, for myself, I think it's better to contact someone personally rather than trying to apply to a broad, you know, job posting, for example. So this is a tactic that I've used that's personally been very successful. Um, read the news. I think this is a very underrated way that people don't look for opportunities. Um, the easiest way to start is really sign up for Variety and Hollywood Reporter newsletters. Um, you know, these are totally free. You'll start seeing what's actually happening in the media and entertainment business. Um, and, you know, I should take a step back and say everything I'm talking about is media entertainment because that's what I've been in, but these tactics can be applied to really any industry. Um, but what's really great is then you can start seeing from reading the news of, oh, this company is expanding or this company starting a new division or this person left and is, you know, starting a new department at another place. And these, when I read these types of articles, I think, oh, this is an opportunity where they may need an intern or where they, mean, where they may need someone to help out. Um, and then you can go into cold emailing and trying to contact people at these places and try to see, you know, are there any openings? Are there any people that you can talk to? Um, Peter actually writes a lot of articles um, for different media publications. And he wrote an article back in March about the pandemic. And, you know, his whole outlook was that people are always going to need to connect. And he was very positive about media's uh, future growth. 
So I emailed him again, sent a cold email. I said, Hey, what you wrote really resonated with me. You know, I'm graduating uh, during this time. And, um, you know, I really appreciate what you said because it's obviously a very challenging time for students. And I did not expect any response back, um, but he emailed me back and he was like, well, guess what? We're actually starting this program called Creative University. And through that, I got connected to him, got my full-time role, um, got involved in Creative Uni University. And it was literally all just because I r read the news pretty regularly. Um, a fourth route is to reach out directly to HR departments. Um, I like doing this because these are the people that have the most visibility into where uh, different areas may need help um, and also where an intern would best, uh, you know, uh, be able to help out. So definitely reach out to recruiters, anyone in talent relations um, and people management. You know, obviously we need to be cognizant of that these people are getting a lot of inquiries. Um, and, you know, I really feel for them because, you know, so many people now are looking for jobs, but at the same time, use all the tools that you can. I think another really understated resource is different online groups and communities, um, you know, specifically Facebook groups. Um, pretty much anyone in these groups wants to network because they've joined this group. So, you know, if I were looking for a role, I would uh, start looking online and looking in Facebook and start searching for, you know, um, professionals in game development, um, media industry professionals, um, you know, women in PR, any of these sorts of groups, um, definitely join them and, you know, do a post, introduce yourself, say, hey, I'm interested in chatting with anyone who's, um, you know, has these sorts of skills or is also interested in the same background as me. Um, reach out to anyone posting in these groups. Um, I think this is another great resource to start connecting with people um, in the fields that you're interested in going into. So um, as I said, I've had the most uh, success through cold emailing people. And there's a few different uh, parts to this. The first is knowing how to research, um, you know, different types of companies that you're interested in and different types of people that you want to reach out to. So um, one thing that I like to do is target sort of middle management, manager slash director people when I email. Um, you don't want someone too senior because they're likely going to be too busy to respond and someone very junior uh, probably won't be able to hire you or really um, uh, won't be able to hire you as soon as someone in a higher position would be able to. The subject line is extremely, extremely important. You know, I think this is actually more important than the email and that's because if the subject line isn't enticing, the email is not going to get opened up. Um, and, you know, I always think like a marketer when I am uh, sending these cold emails and I think, you know, what can I offer this person that would help them? So it doesn't feel as much like I'm trying to say, I need a job, I need an internship. It's more, hey, this is what I can offer you. This is how I can be of help. Um, and always, always follow up. This is something that I'm going to keep repeating, but if you really are shy about following up or can't keep track of that, um, this is honestly probably not the right industry for you because being persistent is something anyone who has been in media for a while will say is very important. Um, so I'm actually going to show you all how I set up these cold emails and um, okay, let's see. So Okay, so the first thing that I'll do, can you guys see um, where it says uh, email at livenation.com? Okay, cool. So um, this is literally how I reach out to people. Um, figure out whatever company you want to work at. In this case, it's Live Nation. Um, from the URL, you know, it's livenation.com. And I'll literally type in this exact phrase, email, and then with the quotes, at livenation.com. And this does is that Google will trigger um, and highlight anywhere where they see this exact format of the email address. So, you know, what do we see when we're going through the results? Okay, right here has all the information that you need. You see here that this person's email is Monique Sawinski at livenation.com. So what this is telling me is that if I want to email anyone at these at this company, their email address is generally going to be first name and last name at livenation.com. Um, and there's obviously a few different variations to this, but generally I find that this tactic works pretty well. So next, what do you do? Go into LinkedIn and start searching for people in the departments and companies that you're interested in. 
So here I wrote marketing Live Nation. Um, and then you can start seeing all the people that potentially fit into this wool. So, okay, the first result you see is the CMO, probably not a good person to target because she's obviously very senior. You're getting some directors, vice presidents. These are not people that I would initially target. You know, obviously anyone could be open to chatting. Um, but if you go down a little bit more, you'll see, okay, here's a marketing manager. Th this is pretty ideal. You know, someone that's uh, mid-career, um, has some knowledge, also probably is not too many years out of, um, you know, interning and things like that. So this is someone that I would first start with emailing. And it's as simple as just typing in Allison Helm at LiveNation.com, which is most likely her email. And, you know, I, when I do this tactic, I'll try to contact two to three people. So, you know, I'd go down the list. Here's a director you could also talk to. Um, so, you know, now you have, you know, the person you want to reach out to and the format of the email. So now, you know, what do you actually say to them? So this is a cold email that I sent earlier this year when I was looking for full-time roles after I graduated from Columbia. And um, then this person actually responded. So the first thing is the subject line, Columbia MBA grad interested in learning about Yamaha. So the reason I chose this subject line is because when I looked up this person, whose name is Thomas Cho, uh, he had MBA in his headline as well. So I thought, okay, mentioning that I'm also an MBA would be beneficial. But this can really be anything that you have in common with the person. It can be you went to the same school, um, you know, you're in the same sorority. It may just be that you love what they work on and they may manage an artist that you're interested in. So you could even plug that in and say, you know, um, you know, I'm a fan of the artists that you're managing. Um, and generally I say something like, you know, I'm interested in learning about your role or your job. Um, something that shows that you just want to have a conversation and not that, oh, I'm looking for something right away. So keep the email short and brief. Um, you know, especially in this time, I think it's important to acknowledge what's happening. Um, you know, a quick, you know, hope everything's okay. Hope this email finds you well. Um, the more that you personalize these emails, the better that your response will be. So I give some background about myself. You know, I say I'm uh, just graduated from Columbia, reaching out to you because, and this is why. And this shows, okay, I specifically have researched this person and I'm interested in what they're doing. So that tells them this is someone that would be worth talking to. Uh, go a little bit into my background, you know, what I've done. Um, and then just leave it open ended at the end about, you know, I'd love to do a quick phone chat to learn more about you and your experience. Um, or sometimes I even just say, would love to chat on the phone, or I can also send you some questions via email if that's, um, you know, if that's something more suitable. And, you know, you may be thinking, well, I don't have all this experience to list right now. And that's fine. You can just talk about what you're interested in, why um, you're specifically passionate about the company that that person works at. Um, the main thing is to just build that personal connection. And, um, you know, as I said before, the subject line is really the most important part. So, okay, great. You sent out this cold email. Now, uh, what I do is I keep track of everything. So this is the tracker that I used um, to apply when I was applying and looking for jobs. And same thing, I did the same thing in undergrad when I was applying to internships. And the whole point of this is to make sure that I'm following up with people. So I'll write, you know, it, it's very simple. The person that um, I emailed, what company they work at, how many times have I followed up? When was the last time that I emailed them? Um, and any comments, you know, if they said, email me um, in a couple of weeks or, you know, oh, um, I sent your email to my colleague, then that would trigger me writing a note saying, uh, let me make sure to follow up with them in case I don't hear back from that person that they forwarded the email to. Um, but really, if you don't have a system, then it, the whole process can feel even more challenging. That's what I found. So having just a simple way to keep track of who you've contacted, um, I think is super important. Um, okay, so let me go back. Okay, so we talked about this. Um, and, you know, like I said, cold emailing is where I've personally had the most success. Um, so what, what I said in that email was, you know, I'd love to chat with you for a couple of minutes and learn about your role. And, you know, one kind of 
I shouldn't say benefit, but one reality of uh, the period that we're in now is a lot of people are working from home and um, have the time to talk on the phone. So um, I've noticed that people have been generally pretty receptive to just giving 15 to 30 minutes of their time. Um, and you know, these calls can feel a little nerve wracking. You know, do you know what to say? Like, how do you make conversation? I think the main thing is to just know how to answer, you know, tell me about yourself. Cause that's the first thing the person's gonna wanna know. Um, I like taking notes. So uh, if it's a phone call, I'll be taking notes as it's going. Or if it's a video chat, then I'll write everything that we discussed right after. Um, because you want to be able to reference that if you talk to this person in the future or, you know, use them for a referral. Always follow up with the thank you note. Um, you know, obviously someone giving their time is something that's worth appreciating. Um, and as I said, keep track of everyone you talk to. And the main part of the main point of these chats is, you know, not to say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Hey, I'm looking for an internship. It's more to really learn about their role and see if you can start building that relationship that we talked about earlier. And I personally also like that because then it doesn't feel like I'm trying to you know, get something out of this person. It's really me just trying to absorb knowledge. And one you know, reality of media and entertainment is that people in this industry love talking about themselves. So um, all the more reason for them to take your phone call and for you to really um, you know, not think about this as you trying to ask for something from them. So, you know, suppose you, when you do get to the interview round or in general, you know, if you want to kind of prepare for more sort of tactical um, sorts of questions, this is something that I think any role you're applying to, these are the five questions that I always prepare for. Tell me about yourself. Everyone should have that down even before they start looking for any sort of opportunities because this is a question you're going to be answering over and over again. Um, why do you want to work at this company? It sounds very simple, but you know, if you're applying to a place like Disney, everyone that's applying is going to say something like, you know, I love the brand, you know, I'm so connected to it because I went to the parks growing up. So really, how can you elevate that answer? Uh, why this role? Why do you want to work in marketing? Why do you want to work in operations? And a lot of this knowledge will come from doing those informational chats and learning from the people that you talk to. And definitely, you know, feel free to reference that if you're interviewing and say, well, I actually talked to someone in the operations department and they mentioned X, Y, Z and mentioned that person by name because people love saying, hey, I actually know that person. Um, and that obviously will only just help your story. Um, if, you're in, if you're recruiting for anything in this field, you have to have your favorites who you love the most down. And what I mean by that is if you're applying to a music company, you're probably going to be asked what music do you listen to? What artists are you into? So definitely be prepared for those kind of more personality based questions. And, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. It's more just to see, like, do you actually want to work at this specific place? And do you have any questions for me? Um, I'd like to keep it to three. Um, you know, one sort of personal question is great. You know, something about how that person got to this role. Um, something about the job, you know, what do they find most challenging? Um, anything that you talked about in the conversation. Um, and I think, yeah, three is a good kind of baseline to, um, to have. My secret weapon um, is to research the hell out of the company and the interviewer. And what I mean by that is go on Google, read every single thing that you can about this person, about the company, and be able to mention those sorts of facts and research into your interview. This is something that really sets people apart because it shows that you actually care about where you're applying and you actually have done your homework. This is how I actually got my job in Qatar because when I was interviewing um, at the company uh, that, I event that eventually led to my full-time job, I had been reading a ton of uh, news about them and I mentioned, oh, I know you're also starting this theme park business and mentioned some details of what I had read. And the interviewer said, oh, like, you know about that project? And she was pretty impressed that I had already, like, been researching about them. And she was like, well, if you work in marketing, we don't have anyone, um, you know, doing that yet. So would you like to start the department? So literally just, again, from reading and uh, being aware and plugging that knowledge into my conversation, that's what led to my, to my job. So here is the resume that I used when I was an undergrad. And I'm going to share... Um, here it is. Okay, can, I, I think you can all see that, right? 
Um, so this is how I generally like to format my resume. I, I use the same format even now. Um, you know, uh, just taking a step back, you're probably like, okay, I don't have all this experience and totally understand. I think with experience, you know, also think beyond just professional jobs and internships, you know, if you've been doing anything in your community, if you're a house of worship, even, you know, side projects are totally fair game to be talking about. Um, and, you know, I think it also adds a lot of personality and color. And, you know, going back to thinking um, as a marketer, um, I like to, you know, think about if someone's reading my resume, how do I want to lay it out so it's as easy as possible for me, for them to get across of, um, for, sorry, for me to get across who I am. So profile section, for example, I like having this because it gives the reader a sense of, okay, this is where this person's at. Um, this is what they're generally interested in, skills that they have. Um, and it's kind of like a, another way to like get your personality across. Skills, I think, is super important because this is the easiest way for someone to see if you're relevant to a role that they may have. So they may be reading a resume saying, oh, you know, we don't really have any internships. Um, but then they may see something like, oh, this person does Photoshop. Well, we actually have this project that we need some help on. It's not really a formal internship but the two can be connected and that can lead to just, you know, again, getting your foot in the door. So um, going into my experience, I liked kind of laying it out this way because I talked about, okay, this is what I have experience in because this is what's most relevant when someone is reading my resume. Um, and again, you know, be creative in how you present different projects, um, you know, things beyond just internships and job experience. Um, all of that's fair game for a resume. So um, someone asked, uh, what's the best way to answer the tell me about yourself question? I always struggle with that. Yeah, I totally feel you on that. I think it's such, um, once you start answering it enough, honestly, it just kind of becomes second nature. Uh, let me pull this up. So um, what I like to start with is first, you know, where am I from? What's my background? You can kind of section it into different parts. So first, you know, give a sort of overall summary of this is my background. This is where I'm from. Uh, this is what I'm interested in. Then the second part is more kind of the experience and, um, you know, skills and what do you bring to the table. And the third part, um, Another kind of secret that I like to do is I like to tie it back to the person that I'm talking to. So I'll say, you know, I've worked in media entertainment and I've, the space I enjoy the most is really events. And that's why I was really interested in working for your company, because I know you've put on a lot of great shows and um, it's something that I really want to get into. And, you know, I definitely don't try to over rehearse. I like kind of bullet pointing. What do I want the person to know? And then just kind of repeating that. Um, as I would in a conversation. Um, okay, so so key learnings. What have I kind of, um, yeah, what have I learned through, you know, employing all of these tactics and interning at all these places? There's really no one way to get an internship. Um, you know, as I said, I don't think I've gotten any job through actually just applying to a formal posting. Um, and I think that's very uh, reflective of how media and entertainment is because so much of it is very, you know, being in the right place at the right time, you know, sending an email when there's an opportunity. Um, you know, taking a step back, thinking about how I got my internship at Insomniac, I had been trying to look on the website um, for any formal internship postings, um, you know, any sort of like career and jobs, and I didn't see anything for a while. And I've been sending cold emails um, that hadn't really heard back. So I just picked up the phone one day and I called them and I said, Hey, you know, I'm interested in interning. Do you have any openings? And they said, Oh, well, you know, we could potentially use a writer. And I had been interning at a music magazine at that time. So I was like, okay, great. I'll send you my samples. And that led to my internship at Insomniac, which then led to my first full-time role. But if I had never called, um, I would have never um, gotten access to that opportunity. And you'll see, especially in this business, the recruiting cycles and the way people go about doing things, it's very gray. There's not always a very set path like there is in other fields like banking or consulting. Um, 
And I kind of find that to be positive because it means there's no one way to do things. So there's a lot of room to be creative and try different tactics. And, you know, as I said, always think like a marketer. How can you offer something the other person will need? How can you say this as succinctly as possible? You know, one reality of the time now is that there are a lot of layoffs happening and people are short staffed. But, you know, if I was looking for an internship, that would mean I can pitch myself to work on projects to kind of pick up areas where a company may not be able to hire someone full time, but they may need someone like an intern to manage social media, um, you know, to manage doing uh, press clippings, to do different sorts of projects. But you're not going to see these types of opportunities listed in a formal posting. And that's where the cold emailing, the setting up the informational chats, uh, that's where all of this um, really comes in. So tips and tricks, like I said, always have a plan. Um, I showed you guys the tracker that I used earlier. Um, you know, without keeping track of where you're applying, it's, um, it really can feel like you're kind of going nowhere. Um, craft your pitch. I think, you know, this is something definitely that um, you can work on even, um, that is like a continuous process. Um, and as I said, always, always follow up. You know, anytime I send an email in my head, I think, okay, I'm going to send another one if I don't hear back. And sometimes I even follow up two times. And, um, you know, you may feel kind of like, oh, is this person feeling like I'm being bothered? Like I'm kind of cold emailing someone who doesn't know me. In my head, I always thought, you know, what's the worst that could happen? they'll probably not reply. Um, I've never gotten a nasty reply or anything negative back. You know, either someone won't reply and that's totally fine. Or they may say, you know, we don't have any openings, but, you know, um, you know, thanks for your interest and they won't further engage. But that tells me this is a person that I should keep on the side in case there is an opening in the future. I can contact them. Um, but none of that's going to happen if you don't follow up with people. So, you know, what about recruiting now? You know, this probably all sounds great, but you're thinking, um, you know, everything's changed because of the pandemic, and that's 100% true. Um, as I said, I graduated this year from uh, my master's degree, so I totally understand how challenging it is to be recruiting in this time. Um, one thing I have noticed is that people are available more to connect and talk on the phone because everyone is working from home. And you know, similar to how Creative University was started as a give back, I think people are generally thinking bigger picture, how can I help out other people? Um, how can I be a resource? So hearing from someone who wants, who's interested in interning or getting their first full-time role, people are much more receptive to actually taking the time to talk to you. But that being said, you know, the reality is, yeah, they may not have a job or an opportunity available, but the goal for now should just be trying to build those relationships and get those conversations going. I also think now more than ever is the time to really think of creative ways um, to offer your services and your work, you know. Um, volunteer to work, especially now, it's hard for people to say no to someone who's willing to work for free. Um, and, you know, you may be thinking, well, do I want to work for free? I just spent all this time getting my degree. I think that's also totally fair. It really just comes down to your personal preference of, um, you know, is this an opportunity that you would be willing to do for free and, you know, potentially pitching yourself in that way. Um, take on uh, administrative tasks or certain items that they may, that a company may not be able to hire someone for full time, but that they want someone to do on the side. Um, and, you know, if you've done any sort of projects in the past, when you're emailing people, send samples of your work, send things that you've done that could be relevant, because um, people love to see that kind of stuff. And, you know, one positive thing is that there is no geographic restriction, you know, pretty much everyone is hiring for people to work remotely. So that means that you're really not limited to any sort of um, geographic restriction, which is um, at least one positive of recruiting in this time. Um, so, you know, just a summary of like North Stars, when you are applying and looking for a job and also, you know, trying to keep your sanity in this period, I think this doesn't get talked about enough, but preserving your confidence, I think is so important to this whole process, because if you're not able to confidently answer, you know, tell me about yourself, um, why should we hire you, um, it's going to be really hard. So if that means, you know, taking some time off, taking a mental day, spending a day doing nothing. You know, I definitely did that when I was looking for a job this year and I think it really just helped. 
Um, you know, there's no need to put pressure to apply to every single thing. And also, you shouldn't feel bad if you're not hearing back at rates that you expected, because I definitely had that experience when I was applying. Always follow up. You know, if you're like I always ask people if they're saying they're not hearing back, I always say, are you following up with them? Because if you're not sending a second or third email, honestly, you might as well not even send the first one. And, you know, a lot of um, media and entertainment can, a lot of it comes down to personal preference. This is something that I've realized the past couple of years. Um, because, you know, you may be seeing um, people um, you know, going through formal recruiting processes, going into consulting, banking, some of these more traditional roles. But meanwhile, you're thinking, I want to get into media and entertainment, but I know that I may not have a job right away, or I, may, I know that it's not going to pay as well. Um, so really, what that comes down to is your own personal preference. For me, it was more important that I work in a field that I knew I enjoyed, and the money wasn't as important when I was getting started. But for some people, the money is more important, and that's also totally fine. It really just depends on um, what you want for yourself. And a lot of times, you don't really learn that until you go through a few different roles. Um, you know, one example of this is when I was, uh, when I got my internship at Insomniac, um, I was living at UCLA. I was a senior there, so I was on the west side of LA, closer to Santa Monica. And the Insomniac office at the time was in Koreatown, closer to downtown. And this was actually in the days before Uber. This was like when Uber was just launching. Um, so I remember I used to take the bus one and a half, two hours to get to this internship. And that was one way. Same for some of the internships I had where I was working at different venues. I would be taking the bus an hour, two hours to get to my actual job. But to me, it was totally worth it because I loved being in that environment, learning what was happening at the company um, and really just getting my foot in the door. Some people may say, you know, that's a little too much for me. I don't know if I'm willing to put up with that. And that's also totally fine. I think we just need to be realistic with ourselves. Um, one thing that I also didn't mention is, you know, there's always, there is this kind of inequity in interning where if you're not able to afford working for free or if you have other financial obligations, um, how can you expect to do these internships that are generally unpaid? you know, especially all the internships I did were unpaid. Um, I did get school credit, which freed up some of my time from doing more classwork. But what I did was I worked at a front desk um, at UCLA at the Sproul dorms that was open 24 hours a day. So I could intern during the day and come back to school and then work from 6 p.m. to midnight um, or work on the weekends. So for me, that system worked, but you know, it's just a reality that a lot of these internships are gonna be unpaid, although that trend has been shifting, I've noticed, which is great. Um, but again, that's something that you have to just kind of assess for yourself, um, how much you're willing to, um, you know, like what your thresholds are for salary, pay, um, work, lifestyle, all of those sorts of things. Uh, Abby is asking, what's a good time frame for following up? Um, generally, I would say about a week. So um, it, basically just give them at least five business days. But a week to two weeks is when I like to send the first follow up. Um, and then again, another week to two weeks for the second one. And again, going back to the tracker, definitely keep by keeping track. It's a very automated process of um, all right. Bye, Kurt. I just saw your note. Um, yeah, it's a very automated process. So yeah, generally a week to two weeks is a good amount of time. And you know, following up, honestly, it's something that I do at my job daily. I have a side note of these are the people at my company I need to follow up with because they said they'd send me something or um, you know, we said we'd discuss this at a later date. So this is a practice that you're gonna keep using. Um, and I'm gonna, again, just post the link to this presentation in the chat for people who join later. Um, and, you know, finally, I think when I was applying and uh, trying to get a job earlier this year, there were definitely times when I was super demotivated. I felt like I would never hear back. And, you know, let's be honest, sometimes you hear, oh, uh, your friend got a job at a really cool company. And then it can feel like, well, what am I doing wrong? Or why am I not able to get that? But I kept telling myself, you know, the only way that I won't succeed is if I stop trying, if I stop reaching out, if I stop 
reading the news, um, if I stop trying to make those connections, that's the only way that this isn't going to work. So if you keep trying, have a schedule and preserve your confidence, like I said, I think there's really no reason why um, it shouldn't work out. And uh, finally, here's my email address. Um, you know, feel free to email me if you want to discuss anything more one on one, like you know, um, maybe you want more help uh, crafting your pitch or you have specific industry questions, um, definitely like open to connecting with students and uh, helping on a more one-on-one uh, -on -one level. And uh, one thing that I also wanted to say is that um, through Creative U, we're also looking for people to help us out with social media and outreach, especially because all of you are in school right now or have just graduated. So that's a great resource that, um, you know, we'd love to tap into. So if you're interested in um, helping us out with this program, um, definitely, you know, email me, um, anam at creative.media, and um, we can also chat about that. All right, cool. So um, that's the that's the whole deck. Um, I know there were some questions I think I didn't get to. So um, if you have any other questions you want to ask, um, feel free to pop it in the chat, or you can use the raise hand function and uh, we can, um, you know, talk face to face. So Gloria is asking, when's a good time to intern? Do I have to wait until university to intern, or are there intern opportunities for high schoolers? Um, there are some. You could potentially intern in high school. I I did an internship between um, graduating from high school, and um, you know, starting at undergrad. Um, one thing to be careful about is that now a lot of times internships they want to make sure that you're either getting compensated through getting paid or through school credit. Um, but again, you can feel free to reach out to people and see if they are willing to take on a high school intern and, you know, think about the types of jobs that you would be able to do. Maybe it's social media posting. Um, maybe it's um, some something like that. But, you know, it definitely doesn't hurt to try. Um, and again, you know, you might hear from people saying we don't really take high school interns but keep track of all those people that you talk to um, because they will definitely you know could be helpful when you are looking for internships when you do get into college um, so anna asks i know you mentioned you didn't have a lot of success with job postings but do you have advice for how to make myself stand out after applying to a posting is it appropriate to reach out cold email after already applying uh, yeah that's a that's a great question um, so first things first, like always apply with a cover letter, always make sure that it's personalized to that company, uh, ideally the person hiring if you know who that is. Um, you know, at the same time, I think uh, even if the job posting doesn't say, you know, cover letter required, send one in because that's the easiest way to at least set yourself apart from all these people that are just sending, um, you know, their resume uh, 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 in mass. Um, I have uh, emailed recruiters after I've applied and I've said, hey, you know, I applied to this role, um, just wanted to read my interest and I point out in the email, this is why I think I'd be a good fit. So going back to thinking like a marketer, thinking, okay, these are the skills these people are looking for and this is what I've done and mentioning all of that in the email that you're sending. Now, a lot of times recruiters won't get back to you, you know, it's just the reality. Um, I've also found for myself personally, this process takes a lot longer, you know, being on this side applying, it can seem like, why haven't I heard back? I applied two weeks ago. And then I'll hear back maybe a month or two months later um, from a recruiter that I emailed um, or from a job posting. So a lot of it is also, um, you know, just setting timeline expectations. But ideally what you want to do is cold email and reach out before the job posting goes up. So if you know, hey, I'm looking for a marketing role at Netflix, start sending those cold emails, start building those relationships, even if there's no opportunity, because then what you can do when a job posting does come up and you apply, you can contact that person that you talked to before and you know say, hey, just to let you know, I saw your department had this opening, I'm super interested in, in it, um, you know, here's my application and also send it to them. And ideally, they will then be able to put in an internal referral for you and get your application uh, to the recruiter or the person that's hiring. So it's a little bit of both, but yeah, I will also uh, email the recruiters after I apply 
Um, a lot of times you won't hear back, but I always say it's good to try rather than um, not. Okay, so Connie's asking, um, is it okay to send a connection request on LinkedIn to someone you don't know, but someone who has a type of role you're interested to learn about? Uh, this is a great point. I actually don't really use LinkedIn to reach out to people other than just um, to research. And that's because I find that I just don't get a lot of responses. So that's why I use the emailing technique where I can just directly email them. So you can try to add people that you don't know, but I personally don't find a lot of success with that. Um, it's better to build that relationship on email when you can, uh, where it can be more personalized. And also on LinkedIn, I think that if you're not directly connected to the person, your messages won't get filtered in the same way. Uh, whereas if you're emailing them, everyone's email will show up the same way. So I generally don't really bother with messaging people on LinkedIn. Um, I prefer using uh, email for that. Uh, Abhishek says, from your experience of working in Qatar, how challenging would you say it is to adapt to a new market? Um, as with COVID-19 reducing geographical barriers, this may be a possibility. Yeah, um, I think there's definitely certain things you can only learn by working abroad or you know, working for a team that is more international focused. Um, really, you know, if it comes to adapting, it's really just about asking questions and trying to learn as much as you can. Um, what I was surprised by my experience working in the Middle East is actually how not different it was from here. You know, most people spoke English. All the business was generally done in English. Um, most people look at the U.S. and this is kind of um, what people look to for who's doing things the best of the best. So working for the theme parks, a lot of what we referenced over time was Disney. And being from LA, obviously that was something I was very familiar with. So, you know, I think a lot of times adapting to markets is just about taking the time to learn, understand people do things differently culturally and having that sensitivity to thinking, why did this person react this way? It may be more cultural based or they may, um, you know, in some cases there may be a language barrier, so they may not understand exactly what you're saying. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think there's a lot of learning that you can't get um, otherwise. Um, okay, any other questions or, um, you know, if anyone wants to just introduce themselves, you know, also happy to, to chat. And like I said, um, you know, you can feel free to email me directly if you have any other like specific questions and I'll just put in my email in the chat again. So I know most, uh, I know a lot of people uh, came from uh, the Whitney Guidance Counselor, which was awesome. Um, I also wanna hear like, you know, where are people generally at? Like, are you guys graduating from school? Um, are you looking for your first full-time role? Like where are people, um, like what are people generally interested in? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Abby. I'm going to change that. So. Um, okay, so I changed the setting so you can unmute yourselves now. So, you know, feel free to just start chatting. Um, Okay, some people are saying, I, I don't really know since school's online and it's all over the place. Um, yeah, I totally feel that, you know, I was, um, I also finished school online, not really a great experience, but again, I felt like that gave me more time to focus on getting professional experience and getting back into the workforce. So it kind of worked out. Uh, I'm a junior looking for an internship in PR, hopefully for next semester or summer. That's great. Uh, you know, PR is definitely a, an industry that's very, that I think is more adapted than others um, to this time period. And everyone's looking for publicity. Um, and, you know, I've, I've worked in marketing and PR for a while. So definitely happy to also strategize if you're interested about um, how you can like figure out where to apply to. Um, 
Um, Tracy says she's an MBA student at UCI, a nonprofit professional seeking to pivot into product management in the music tech space. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, another area that's definitely hiring right now, which is great. Um, you know, I was looking at the Amazon Music, Spotify, things like that. Um, especially in music tech, I think having those referrals and setting up those chats is uh, going to be very important. Um, I'm currently a sophomore just trying to figure out what interning really is and how it works. Um, that's awesome. I love that we have, uh, you know, high school people here. And, you know, like I said, I started interning actually before college, so it's never too early to start. Um, but yeah, I think the best way to think about it is it's, it's a great way to just get access into a company and learn how do things actually work. And you don't have to commit to them. You can spend a couple of months and then move on to another place. Um, I just graduated from college looking for an internship in film. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I also graduated this year. Um, Abby says, I'm a theme park design producer. I was laid off in March and I'm looking to pivot my skills into a new industry. I started taking classes at UCLA Extension to learn more about producing for film and TV. I'm trying to figure out how to get my foot in the door at a new company and start working again. Okay, yeah, I mean, um, I, like I said, I worked at a theme park startup in Qatar, so definitely um, happy to chat about that further if you're interested in, in that. Um, you know, I think That's you can... Cool. Oh, I was like, yeah, sorry. that was really cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I was saying, yeah, it'd be great to connect with you. Thanks for your time. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, obviously theme parks, unlike some, some of the areas other people are interested in, it's going to be uh, a while until they get back to where they were, but I think there's definitely a lot of transferable skills there, especially, you know, if you think more broadly, like experiential um, or, you know, just uh, consumer marketing and things like that. Um, Chloe says, I'm a freshman at Whitney and I'm just trying to gain a little bit of knowledge on how interning would work. That's awesome. Um, yeah, like I said, I graduated class of 09, so it's great to connect with you all that did go to, that are not Whitney now. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. If anyone has anything else, um, you know, feel free to email me or, um, you know, anything else. And I hope, you know, in general that, you know, similar to what Peter has been doing, Peter and Luisa have been doing, just trying to spread, you know, more positivity and helping people stay motivated in this time, I think is super important. So um, I hope I was able to do some of that and definitely keep trying because uh, media entertainment is a great industry to be in. Um, I think, the types of opportunities that you get and the experiences I don't think are possible in any other part um, or any other industry and I've really enjoyed my time so far and um, yeah look forward to connecting with you all later so thank you